Well, as stories go, it's one of the stranger ones we'll come across in the Bible. This account of Jacob wrestling throughout the night with a mysterious opponent leaves us scratching our heads over so many puzzling questions. Who was the stranger who appeared out of the night shadows? Why did they wrestle? And most importantly, what does the story mean for you and me? It's helpful to have a little bit of background information on Jacob. Had he lived today, Jacob may have been described as either gender fluid or gender queer. He didn't fit easily into the gender roles of his time. On any given day when you might find his butch brother Esau outdoors hunting, you would you would have found a quiet and smooth-skinned Jacob inside with the women, developing his skills in cooking and sewing, both of which would, which would serve him well later in life, as it turns out. But although Jacob seemed not to possess the stereotypical outdoor hunting skills of other men, he certainly outdid himself in the bedroom. Jacob fathered 13 children, 12 boys and a girl, with four different women, two wives and each of their hand servants. And although Jacob was blessed with a house full of children, and although we read that he was blessed with an abundance of riches, which included large flocks and male and female slaves and camels and donkeys, and although he even managed to finagle a blessing from his father, which rightfully belonged to his brother Esau, Jacob never felt truly blessed. There was something deep within him that spoke louder than all those blessings, something telling him that he was unworthy. And he believed it. That's the dilemma of many LGBTQ people today. Regardless of our circumstances, many of us still feel unworthy because of the everyday discrimination we face. Fewer than half of the 50 states of the U.S. specifically bar discrimination based on sexual orientation or gender identity. So this week, the Supreme Court heard cases that will decide the future of LGBTQ people in the workforce. And after over two hours of debate, it was still not clear how the just justices are likely to rule. A bad ruling will strip away protections against discrimination that LGBTQ people have been able to use to safeguard ourselves for two decades. In short, the stakes are very high. Like Jacob, we have fought for every blessing we have ever received and still we don't feel blessed. Many of us still struggle with messages of unworthiness that are buried deep within us. And that's what brings us to this morning's story about Jacob's nighttime wrestling match with the mysterious stranger. Scholars have, over the centuries, debated the identity of Jacob's opponent. Although the text clearly says he was a man, Jacob seemed to think his opponent was God, saying, I have seen God face to face, and yet my life is preserved. But it seems Jacob was prone to seeing God everywhere. Earlier on, while lying under the stars with a rock for his pillow, he called the place House of God because he felt certain that God was in that place. Later, upon reconciling his differences with his brother Esau, he would say, to see your face is like seeing the face of God. Jacob saw God everywhere and in everything except maybe himself. Most artwork that depicts the wrestling match shows Jacob wrestling with an angel. And although the prophet Hosea would later say that Jacob struggled with an angel, there's actually no mention of any divine being in the Genesis account. So if it wasn't God, 
and it wasn't an angel, then who could it have been? I wonder if it wasn't himself. I wonder if this is a story about Jacob's struggles with himself and his desperate lifelong quest for worthiness. No matter how successful he may have appeared by worldly standards, Jacob never seemed to feel successful or worthy or blessed. He had spent his whole life looking outside of himself for that sense of self-worth. And it wasn't until this night, as he struggled and wrestled with his own identity, that he would finally walk away feeling blessed. Unfortunately, too many members of today's LGBTQ community find themselves in the same struggle. We don't necessarily call it blessing. Instead, we use the word affirmation. We look for affirmation from our parents and family members. We look for it from our churches and schools. But no matter how many people may tell us we matter and we are worthy, we still don't experience the blessing because we don't believe it about ourselves. And until that happens, life will always be a struggle. I had a friend named Rodney when I lived in Baton Rouge. Rodney was a success story. He ran a prominent day school. He had a wife and a son. And he was as gay as the day is long. Rodney was free with his money, buying gifts for other people, never expecting anything in return. Actually, never feeling as if he deserved anything in return. Rodney's life was a desperate struggle against his sexuality. No matter how much I and his other gay friends told him he was a beautiful soul, he never believed it about himself until one day he took his own life. No matter how many people tell us we are worthy, no matter how many times we are pointed to it in the Bible, we will continue to struggle with our own lack of self-esteem until the day comes when we can join in the chorus of the psalmist who wrote, It was you, O God, who formed my inward parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works, that I know very well. Rodney is at peace now. But there are a lot of LGBTQ people who aren't. They struggle through the night like Jacob did. They cry out for a blessing, and it's only the lucky few who receive it. Jacob did. After finding himself all alone one night without family or wealth to shield him from the voices of his inner demons, he finally came face to face with his own sense of unworthiness. He battled all through the night but won the match. It was a struggle in which he walked away with a new identity and a new name. Jacob was transformed in that moment. Some of us go through spiritual transformations when we finally cast off the notion that we are anything but beautiful creations of God. Some go through physical transformations and take on new names like Jacob did. No longer would he be known as Jacob the trickster. Instead, his name would be Israel the wrestler. Jacob would always remember the night he wrestled with himself. The night he finally accepted a blessing from himself. He would remember because of the pain of that night that would cause him to limp. A pain that he would carry with him throughout his days. You and I may finally come to the awareness that we are blessed by God, but we must never forget the pain it took to get where we are. A painful history that includes the police brutality 
that resulted in the riots at Stonewall Inn. The martyrdom of the likes of Matthew Shepard, Harvey Milk, and the multitudes of LGBTQ people every day, especially black trans women. A painful history of rejection by family members, workplaces, and church communities. A pain that may cause us to limp, but must never keep us from boldly walking into the daybreak. We have come too far, my friends, to give ourselves over to the struggle. It's too important. It's a matter of life and death for not only ourselves, but for millions of others. We are indeed fearfully and wonderfully made. Fierce and fabulous, if you will. May each of us embrace our identity as the fierce and fabulous children of God. Amen.